Alunia de Absolve me, fathers. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Uh, congratulations to today. Today we celebrate uh, the feast of San Verena. Um, and, I, and, and I brought you some of her stuff. <laughs> I brought you the weapons of San Verena. These were the weapons of San Verena. Um, uh, I went today through her story, and actually her story is really amazing. It's written in a, in a very um, a very small um, uh, uh, yani story, but it's, it's, when you go to the, some of the details, it's, it's really, truly amazing story. Um, I think all of you know the story of San Verena, but we can just go through. She, she went with, um, with the army to Europe, so they are going to a war, and when they arrived, the, the king there asked them to pray some prayer for, uh, uh, for the idols, and they refused, so they killed them all. And one of these army leaders um, was St. Morris, and St. Morris was her relative, and she was really, um, it was a shock, because they all um, accepted to uh, accept to die, then to live, and... Um, as per some of the stories, she buried, she buried some of the soldiers. And after that, she, she left and she started her, um, let's say it's a monastic life, so it was a, not a monasticism, but she started to live as a, as, a, as a nun. She went to a cave and she was um, staying there praying and, and fasting. And, and she started, a lot of people know about her and she, because she was a nurse, because she was a nurse, so she know how to, uh, to do some medicine because she was in, from the pharaonic background. She knows some medicine and some herb, and she was helping people a lot. And God started to do a lot of miracles in her hands because of her righteousness and her amazing heart. And that was really um, amazing because a lot of girls start coming, start coming and want to know about Jesus Christ, and she was preaching. She didn't mean to preach. But she was telling them about her love, Jesus Christ. Yes? She was telling them all these, these who are my love, these whom I worship. And a lot of miracles happened to her. And because of that, the, the king put her in the, in the prison because she was quite famous. And St. Maurice appeared to her and gave her strength. And then he, he let her out. And... After that, the story went to a different direction at all. So she started really serving between the people. And the people he, who killed her family with weapons and swords, she was fighting them with these two. <laughs> she was fighting the poverty with these two. She so was, was fighting the devil with these two. And these two represent love, the kump and and cleaning and helping the people. Whenever she, whatever she finds um, any poor or any need, she go and help. She finds some kids need some cleaning and need some help in combing the hair or cleaning them. She take her weapons and go. Put some water, clean. There was no this kind of chemicals we find today to make the hair really easy to, uh, <laughs> to make, but she was using her tools to spread love everywhere. And if you go to um, Switzerland, you find she's quite famous there, and you'll find a lot of statues there around the country. They love her. She taught us how to be clean and how to be loved, and we could be loved. Yeah. So she she was not really preaching with a very nice uh, words. She was just spreading love everywhere with these two. Not a lot of tools. I think that's not a hard tools to spread love. And the, the story tells us that she was really, really keen about the, the ill people, especially the ones that have a leprosy. She used to go to them and to bring them and to ward their wound and to heal, try to, to, to give them some comfort to their... And that, you know, as you know, that the leprosy, you should not touch the person, but she was not... She don't care. <laughs> she used to, to heal and to clean and to help the poor and the needy and whatever... So she was, she was really loved. And as you, um, if you concentrate on the life of the saints, yani, most of them are really simple. And they use uh, simple ways 
um, for the love of Jesus Christ, to show the love of Jesus Christ. They just keep themselves righteous and they show love with a very simple stuff. So actually, if you want to tell people in Australia about Jesus Christ, you don't need the big things. <laughs> you don't be, need the big things, actually. You just need love. And her love appeared in this comb. And her love appeared in this. Hmm? That's it. This is what she used. Nothing more, nothing less. She was truly amazing in her simplicity. One of the, one of the comments I, I uh, read about uh, Sam Verena today, that she fighted the weapons with a comb. Her comb was a big weapon of love. To show love and to show um, respect and to teach so she was not uh, really complaining about the place, complaining about the people who killed my family, uh, complaining about the place is not my, my country, complaining about the disease which is spreading uh, everywhere. <laughs> she was just going to help as much as she can with a very simple tools. Can we do like Sam Verena? She was praying an amazing living a monastic life. She go outside, help the poor and the cleaning the, the one who needs clean, making the hairs, very simple. Extremely simple, extremely deep. And I think Jesus Christ don't need more than that to, to show love. About. Show love in the simplest way you can show to the people around you. This is an example for us. When I look to it, maybe $2 this one. <laughs> one dollar Chinese shop. <laughs> You understand? This is, this is, you can hang it at home and see. This is what's simple. And she, this, this one converted a lot of people to Christianity. And by the way, same for, for a lot of saints. They use a very simple tools to show love and to show Christ, the King. So she was spreading joy. And uh, as you know, we are going to um, um, sermons of joy. All of them are about joy. And I never, I never ever think that she can spread that joy around the people who are struggling without having Jesus Christ in her heart. Jesus Christ is the main reason of our joy and our happiness and our comfort in our hearts. I'll go through three stories and that's it. I will not make it long today. It was long enough for you. So let's go, Baba, to some examples about Jesus Christ's life and when he was here and he's still here. <laughs> When was here, spreading the joy everywhere, whatever was the struggle, whatever was the hard time. So I know that all of us are staying at our homes. So I get you some, some stories from inside the homes of the people at that time, from 2,000 years back. When the people are struggling inside their homes, Jesus, when he come, he spread the joy. We read about the ruler. <clears throat> While he spoke the thing to them, the ruler came and worshipped him and saying, my daughter has just died at his house. But come and lay her hands on her and she will live. That's an amazing faith. Just come to my home and all my problems will be, will finish. And during this was, was happening, a very amazing story con happening inside. And suddenly a woman who had a, a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched him. There was a plenty of people around touching and pushing, and, but she touched him differently. And she said in her heart, if I only I may touch his garments, I shall be made well. Jesus turned around, and when he saw her, he said, be of a good cheer. Yeah? Jesus Christ, when he come to us, to our home and to our life, he give us a good cheer. Without him, there is no joy. There is no cheer. Without him, even we have everything in life, whatever we have, everything. Without him, we have no cheer. With him, and if we have nothing. Huh? She was in a, living in a tomb and having these two. She was having full joy and spreading the joy. Without Netflix and Facebook and Instagram and uh, nothing, Habibi, <laughs> she had this too. <laughs> she was full of joy and spreading joy. And uh, as you go to the story, she died in the, 
in the age of 95. She was serving till her last age with these tools. Have nothing and she's spreading the joy. Jesus Christ told her, be in a good cheer, daughter. Your faith has made you well. Don't struggle at home, Habibi, during the COVID-19. Don't struggle during the lockdown. Be of a good cheer. If you ask Jesus Christ to come to your home, he will give you a full cheer. Let's continue. And when Jesus Christ came to the ruler's house, he saw a flute pray, players and a noisy crowd wailing. All of them are, are crying. So he said to them, it's okay. She didn't die. She's sleeping. For sure, in front of his eyes, he's sleeping. And they ridiculed him and the crowd was put outside, he went and took her by his hand and the girl aroused. And the cries and the screams changed to happiness and joy and jumping and uh, screaming in a different way, happily. In Egypt, we nazagrat, huh? they start to nazagrat. So Jesus Christ, Baba, when he entered to their house, which was really extremely destroyed with the death of this girl, he changed it to a house of joy and happiness. Jesus Christ was sleeping in a boat while all, all the disciples were there in the boat and suddenly a great tempest arrived to the sea so the boat was covered with the waves but he was asleep. <laughs> you imagine it the same story in our life. Yani our life is going upside down and we are locked down and tired and stressed and but someone is inside asleep. Then his disciples came to him and awake him and say, saying, Lord, save us. We are perishing. Lord, save us. We are perishing. He was waiting for them to ask. Ask, it will be given to you. If you didn't ask, so do it yourself. So, but he said to them, why you are fearful? You little faith. And he aroused and rebuked the wind and the sea, and there was a great calm. I love these two words. <laughs> a great calm. There was a great calm. Not a calm. Not normal calm. A great calm. One second before, it was upside down. They were about to die, and were stressed, and tired, and sick, and screaming, and thinking about their uh, place and their families. And second before, after they asked Jesus Christ, can you please help? He helped them. So Jesus Christ in our homes, Habibi, but he is asleep inside. And just we want to wake him up and say, can you help us? Can you help us with the stress? Can you help us with, with this lockdown or our problems? The disciples, another time after Jesus Christ died on the cross, was staying, was staying really afraid inside the upper room. And they are really afraid because they are afraid from the Jews to catch them. So... And the same day in the evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut. Huh? It's the same story as we live it these days. We are alone at our homes, afraid, going out with masks, afraid to meet anyone, afraid to see anyone, we get to go with. But Jesus came and stood in the midst and said to them, peace be with you. I think this is the only word we need to hear these days, peace be with you. So he brings them a lot of cheer. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. And the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. They were happy. He, bring, he came and he bring happiness and joy and cheer as usual. Last story. Jesus brought the joy to Zacchaeus' house. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, 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 I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false acquisition, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation came to this house. Because Jesus Christ, he, because he invited Jesus Christ to his house. Huh? And Jesus came, a salvation happened to his house and a happiness and joy. He lost a lot of money, by the way. <laughs> but he gained a lot of joy and happiness. He lost a lot of things, worldly things, but he gained a lot of joy and happiness. So what's the conclusion of today's stories? Please daily invite Jesus Christ to be at your home. Let him come and be with us, please. We need you here. Yeah? We can't live without Jesus Christ. So.
If you are not used to pray together at home, try to pray together at home, as a family. If you can't pray together, one person to pray alone at home and bring Jesus Christ, and he will turn the house upside down. Whatever sadness, death, sin, tiredness in there, he will turn it upside down. He told us that. He told Jesus, answered and said to them, if anyone loved me, he will keep my word and my father will, will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. We just need to invite him, Habib. Hmm? We keep his commandments huh? and he will come and love us and make a home inside. Huh? So our home will be a place for the dwelling of Jesus Christ. Last story, Jesus Christ said, sometimes he is staying at our door and knocking. And he said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. He is knocking on our doors to give us the comfort and the happiness and the joy he used to give everywhere to everyone. We just have to accept and open our doors and to put him in our homes by our prayers and opening the Bible. Again, if you can't do it as a family, do it alone. Yeah? One of the family to come and pray, and slowly, slowly, Jesus Christ will be at the family, spreading the joy and happiness. Again, congratulations for uh, San Vrina's feast. Let's learn from her simplicity that we just want to give love to the people around us and spread the joy. Take the joy from Jesus and spread it everywhere as San Vrina. And glory be to God forever and ever. Amen.